Hello! My name is Erica and I'm going to talk about aquarium life support chemistry. I'm showing you the structure of an amino acid right now. An amino acid is the common building block of proteins. Depending on the different R groups here, there are 20 different amino acids that make up proteins. When you add fish flakes to your aquarium, the proteins that are either eaten by the fish or left rotting on the ground will degrade. The degradation involves the breaking of these bonds in between atoms, and this atom is a concern. It's called nitrogen, and in the protein structure and in these amino acids, it's surrounded by hydrogens. So in water, it tends to hydrolyze. There's a lot of hydrogen and oxygen available in abundance in water, and this nitrogen here in proteins becomes ammonia. Ammonia is nitrogen surrounded by three hydrogens. It's extremely toxic. The LC50, or the lethal concentration to kill half of the population for bay scallops for 72 hours is 0.4 milligrams per liter. Test kits, hilariously to me, often will read up to eight milligrams per liter. That is too high. 0.4 is too high. You would lose half of your population in three days if you had 0.4 milligrams per liter of ammonia. So the food that you feed to your aquarium can also kill it. There are two major strategies for how to get ammonia out of your water. There are two major strategies for how to get ammonia out of your water. One strategy called Nitrosomonas bacteria will convert this ammonia to a less toxic compound that can be removed with water changes. The second strategy, aquatic plants, is to undo, go from ammonia back to protein. And in this strategy, the growth of the aquatic plants the new proteins, the new leaves and stems, uses this nitrogen bound to these two hydrogens to make a new protein. So there are two strategies and I'll talk about them both. The first is oxidation. Oxidation is when these hydrogens are replaced with oxygens and this is called nitrate. It's the end product of bacterial activity and its lethal concentration to kill half the population is 4,000 milligrams per liter. 0.4 versus 4,000 is 10,000 times different. So this is dramatically less toxic, and usually for most freshwater fish, 30 milligrams per liter of nitrate won't cause problems. So. 30 milligrams per liter of nitrogen surrounded by hydrogens would kill your fish dead. <laughs> 30 milligrams per liter of nitrogen surrounded by oxygens is usually okay for most fish. So bacterial ammonia oxidation, usually you can have weekly water changes to keep that nitrate concentration below 30 milligrams per liter. And that's perfectly good for your life support. Problems with this method include water changes. They're annoying. And also, if you have a spike in your ammonia concentration because you added too much protein or a fish died and you didn't see it and it's rotting somewhere, the nitrate, unfortunately, the rate of nitrate production is dependent upon the bacteria population converting the ammonia to the nitrate. So sometimes a spike of ammonia can leave the ammonia unprocessed and in this form in your water for days. And that means that your fish can die. So it's, it's not as rapid to respond to spikes in nitrogen. And also if people do a water change and they forget to dechlorinate their water, the reason why we put chlorine in our water is to kill cholera and E. coli and other bacteria that we don't want to drink. So it will kill your nitrosomonas bacteria as well. And then with no nitrosomonas bacteria, your ammonia builds up and your fish die. So chlorinated water changes, um, ammonia spikes, 
and the water changes are annoying are all reasons why bacteria and filters specifically, because the bacteria inside the filter are the thing doing the work. Um, so those are all reasons why that is not my favorite method. All right, and before I move on to plants, I just wanna, just in case I refer to anyone to watch this video because you have an ammonia spike. Do you have to wait for the bacteria to breed up and before you can get rid of the ammonia? The answer is no. There's a new product called API Quick Start, and they've got these pretty convincing graphs that their bottled bacteria is alive. And so at first I thought, can you bottle bacteria? Does it stay alive in a bottle? That sounds like it does not work. But based on their graphs, it looks like it does. So here's the milligrams per liter of ammonia. And remember in this LC50 to, to get you on track, this is the amount that would kill half of the population in 72 hours if you had base scallops. Link in the description below. The blue line is a control aquarium that did not receive API Quick Start and that was fed fish flakes daily. This is a guppy tank. The red line is Quick Start. You can see that in the Quick Start aquarium, although there's a peak at day 7, by day 14 there's no ammonia and the concentration did not reach like the amount to kill fish. So this 1.6 milligrams per liter at 14 days, about two weeks. So from two weeks to basically a month, this tank is super toxic. Things would totally die. All your fish. And that's called new tank syndrome, this 14 to 28 day region. So quick start, apparently it works. This is, again, this is their website. So um, I have used it in the past and it appears to work. Um, check the expiration date on your bottle. So if at any point you do a water change with chlorine and you see an ammonia spike or you see dead fish and test the water and you measure an ammonia spike, you don't have to wait for it to kill everything else in the tank. You can buy API Quick Start. Okay. So now I'm going to talk to you about plants. Remember how I said that plants can take ammonia, which is surrounded by hydrogens, and use it to make new proteins. I'm going to share some information from Ecology of the Planted Aquarium, a book by Diana Wallstad that's available on bookmasters.com. This is from her free PDF, Plants vs. Filters, How Plants Help. I highly recommend this book. It's super useful and everything I'm about to tell you is just the tip of the iceberg for all of this really great research that she did. So in her free PDF she has this table. And this table shows the hours required for the plant to take up or eat the nitrogen from its solution. This plant's called water lettuce, but it's an example. Most plants behave this way, true aquatic plants. What they do is they take a nitrogen concentration and let's use 0.4 as the example because that's the amount that, if it were ammonia, would kill half of your population in 72 hours if you had base scallops. So if you have 0.4 milligrams per liter of ammonia, the plants will take it up in four hours. Now they prefer ammonia to nitrate, so it takes them a little bit longer. It takes them 20 hours to take it up. But this is basically the same as you doing a water change, this nitrogen going all the way back down to zero. And the plants do it by making new leaves and stems. They do it for you. You don't have to do any work. So all of this toxic ammonia that would have been enough to kill your fish in 72 hours makes it about four hours into that curve and then is gone, completely gone. The lovely thing about plants is that they can handle a huge ammonia spike. One issue with bacteria is that it takes them so long to respond to ammonia. Let's say, for example, 26 milligrams per liter. This is way more than it takes to kill your fish. This is hugely toxic. And it takes the plants 4.3 hours to eat it all. So basically, plants are magic. <laughs> They're fantastic. 
and they'll take care of a problem that should have destroyed the entire aquarium and everything living in it in four hours. And if, if that amount of nitrogen, 26 milligrams per liter, is in the form of nitrate, I mentioned that that's a, a relatively safe concentration for your aquarium to stay at. If you have a freshwater aquarium, plants will take that amount of nitrogen up in a, this is on the week's time scale. So it's possible for plants to run out of soluble nitrogen, and if you have a floating plant like this water lettuce, doesn't have roots, the only source for its nitrogen is the water column, soluble nitrogen, like ammonia and nitrate. It's possible for these floating plants to run out of nitrogen. So some people own nitrate test kits and ammonia test kits just to make sure that their plants have food. They're literally so good at life support that sometimes they run out of soluble nitrogen. So do you need to do a water change if your ammonia is 0, 0.0 and your nitrate is 10? That's a good question. For me, I say no. <laughs> There's no reason. The whole point of a water change is because you have bacterial ammonia processing and you have nitrate accumulating. If you have plants, sometimes I, I just don't see any rationalization for a water change. If you have multiple plant species, they can release small phenol type compounds that can, they do war with each other, and this is called allelopathy. But the end product of that is that you just have one plant tanks, because they've murdered all the other plants around them. So allelopathy is a, a valid reason to do water changes, in my experience. Um, anyway, so that's a question you'll have to ask yourself. Do I have any reason to do water changes when I literally don't have any soluble nitrogen? Um, but just to compare it again with this bacteria, let's say that your ammonia is at 0.4, enough to kill half of your population in 72 hours. It would take bacteria starting at 2 days, 4 days, 7 days, 11 days, 14 days, 18, so 72 hours was here, you lost half your population. And it's still not better, still not better, still not better. It takes almost a month to get ammonia down below the amount that's actively killing your fish. It takes plants four hours. So you, so there's life support in a nutshell, four hours versus a month. And um, just to show you guys an example, I'm going to take you over here. This is one of my aquariums. And so a lot of people ask me, how do you have aquariums with no filters? I don't see a filter box on your aquarium. Where is your filter? Why don't you have a filter? And the reason is because plants are better at it. They're better at life support. Now, not all plants are created equal. Um, for example, Anubias. Anubias is a plant that is basically an inactive brick. It doesn't make new proteins, so it doesn't use ammonia. The way to tell if your plants are actively removing ammonia is to take a picture of them and then a few days later, maybe a week later, take the same picture. If your plants have changed, that means they made new proteins, they made new tissues. If they get taller towards the light, they have to grow up towards the light, they're removing nitrogen from your water. So um, I think that's about it for my life support video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, life support is a lot easier when you know what your ammonia is, so my number one piece of advice is to buy an ammonia and a nitrate, buy them both, test kits. You can go on eBay and you can buy the test kits for $10 delivered right to your door, you don't even have to get up, and you can test your water, I think it's 90 and 150 tests per $10. And so for $20, you can have two test kits that can tell you what invisible poisons are happening in your water and whether your fish are safe. Life support. It's fantastic. I hope you guys um, learned from this video, and I hope that helps.